At first, the deadly intruder did not have a name. The lifestyle of some male homosexuals has triggered an epidemic of a rare form of cancer. But it quickly developed a reputation. And the deaths kept coming and coming. The fear was palpable. I was terrified of passing on HIV to someone else. But in the years that followed, it was pretty miraculous for me. So was the bravery. Because of them, I can live a healthy and happy life. <laughs> we sat down with four wow, gay men from four different nice. generations, all living with HIV. The oldest is Jesse Milan, who's still haunted by the beginning of the epidemic. People who, because they had been diagnosed, suddenly disappeared. And, and we all knew what that silence meant. Jesse was diagnosed in the 80s after losing his partner, George, and so many others. It was hard. It was a very hard. At the time, many leaders were accused of ignoring the crisis because it was deemed a gay disease. President Reagan didn't give his first major speech on AIDS until 1987, six years after the first diagnosed case. We must have a definition of AIDS. For Dr. Anthony Fauci, the epidemic was a turning point. In 1984, he became the nation's top infectious disease expert, the same job he holds today. When there is resistance, was it hard to get the resources you needed? Well, in the beginning, it was. I mean, we, we, we were trying to convince people that this was not something that was going to go away. This is something that was going to get worse and worse. To raise awareness, the AIDS memorial quilt was unveiled on the National Mall. Joe His organizers read the names of those who died. Some shared their stories publicly, including actor Rock Hudson, teen Ryan White, who tested positive after a blood transfusion, real-world star Pedro Zamora, and basketball legend Magic Johnson. In 1995, a combo therapy known as the AIDS cocktail was ushered in, followed by even better medications, offering hope. But there was no cure for the stigma. Right now, there are millions of people with HIV suffering from social rejection because they and other people believe that they're infectious, and, and they're not. Diagnosed in 2003, Bruce Richmond says he was terrified of giving HIV to someone else. So I, I didn't love. I just, I, I isolated myself. I was depressed, and at times I was, I was suicidal. But then he learned medication could reduce his viral load to undetectable levels, meaning he couldn't transmit the virus. So Bruce started an advocacy group and coined the phrase, you equals you, undetectable equals untransmittable, a message endorsed by the CDC. It gave me hope. It meant that I could be, I could be intimate. People with HIV can live healthy lives and, and not pass on the virus to anyone. And that's a revolution. Today, about 38,000 Americans are still diagnosed each year. DeAndre Moore was 19. Remember staring at a window covered in butterfly stickers. In that moment, all I could think was, TM, if, if I could be one of those butterflies and just fly away from here, then everything is going to be OK. Ray F. Durazi had a similar reaction. He was 27. So I knew next to nothing about what it meant to be diagnosed with HIV. It was a steep learning curve. And what did you learn? <laughs> well, I learned that I'm not going to die. I'm, I'm alive and well. You think back to that moment with the butterfly. What would you tell yourself in that moment? You're going to be OK. You're going to be just as beautiful. <laughs> Today, all four of these men are undetectable. And all are advocates sharing their stories to educate the public and fight the stigma. It's taken us 30 years of the AIDS crisis to teach the whole world that our lives and our loves are equal to everyone else. It blows my mind just how far we've come and then just what's possible now. So, What, what is possible now? <laughs> my mind immediately says what isn't possible. That's the answer. Another key breakthrough in recent years, PrEP. It's a daily pill that people who are HIV negative can take to prevent getting the disease. As for an HIV AIDS vaccine, well, that has not happened yet. But Dr. Fauci tells me he is cautiously optimistic that someday we will have a vaccine that is successful. 26-year-old DeAndre Moore, who you saw there, hopes that he is someday going to be part 
of an AIDS-free generation. And we want to give a big thank you to three organizations that helped us with that story there, the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, AIDS United, and the Prevention Access Campaign. It's incredible to see how far we've come in those decades. We all remember those scenes mm -hmm. in the 80s, but there still is a stigma. Isn't that what you learned? Yeah, there is. And it's actually kind of amazing, especially with young people, which is surprising. So a recent survey of HIV-negative millennials found that nearly a third of them say they avoid hugging, talking to, or even being friends with someone with HIV. People living with HIV often report being hesitant still to openly share their status because they fear losing friends or family, or they even fear abuse, whether it's physical, emotional, or mental. Just reminds us of Billy Porter I'm just, just last that. week, yep. who just who just announced what it. What a big he, sign of bravery yeah. even now. It's needed now, right. yeah. just as more than before. And he waited 14 years, waited to tell his mother, mm -hmm. so that stigma is still there. Right. Yeah. Joe, oh, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Again, we will be celebrating Pride all month across all four hours of today. Our streaming platforms and online at today.com slash pride. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.